Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, and today we are taking a look at a old classic Fabius Bile. Um, I haven't painted this model in like 15 years. I was a terrible painter when I started, but um, we're going to have a, a crack at him because he was lent to us by uh, one of the fans of the studio. I've primed him in Vallejo Black Primer as always, and we're going to be using just the brush most of, um, no, all of this video actually, just a paintbrush and a wet palette. So the first colour we're going to start applying is we're going to start applying um, XV88 by Games Workshop. As you can see, that's a brilliant starter colour for that flesh coat that he wears, which um, I'm a really big fan of. It's a really good feature. Now we're going to mix XV88 with a bit of Kislev Flesh. And this video is really long. I do apologise for that, but when you start doing these um, glazing techniques, it um, takes a lot more time to show you what's actually happening on the video. That's why everything's sped up, um, so you have to bear with us on that one. I'm just going to start working that colour from the bottom of the shaded area to the light area. Then we're just going to do the exact same thing with Kislev Flesh on its own. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're not very good at glazing, because we're going to put washers on this, so anywhere where it looks a bit dry and patchy, those washers are going to blend those other colours together as well and act as a filter so you don't have to be perfect with this and at this bit of the coat here I'm pulling the paint downwards because he's going to be wearing his backpack so that's going to be a shaded area so the light will only really be at the um, middle section and at the very bottom of his coat now this is a mix of Reclam Flesh Shade and a tiny bit of Ethonian Camo Shade mixed with a lot, and I mean a lot, of Lamiate Medium and we're going to put this on in two different layers because we're, we want to add a couple of filters on there to really blend that glazing work together. Don't have to worry too much about being too neat, just don't let it pull up too much but it shouldn't do because the way the uh, model sculpted I didn't find any problems with it pulling anywhere. Now for his armour, I decided to start with Games Workshop's Nagaroth Knight and that is really watered down as well as you can see here, it's not really going on much um, it's more of a wash, but we're going to start pulling that up from the um, recesses to the top and we're going to keep doing that in about five different layers and the uh, five different layers on things is the uh, reason this video took longer than usual to get out and we're going for another coat of Reclam Flesh Shade and Athonian Camo Shade. There's only a tiny bit of Athonian Camo Shade in this, just to tint ever so slightly the green, uh, the green filler. Don't want to go over the top, but I also didn't want the Reclam Flesh Shade to be too red. Then I must have got myself mixed up because I ended up using Carrick Stone to highlight the uh, tops of the flesh again. It seems to have worked but it's a bit too pronounced for my liking so you could probably just go back to a um, Kislev flesh. It will uh, stop the um, stop it looking quite so pale but the end result ended up looking okay anyway. Now we're using Nagaroth Knight mixed with a bit of Zarius Purple by Games Workshop and we're going to glaze that into the centre of the shoulder pad and the knee pad and the top of the boot as well because we're going to start glazing those up and highlighting them so we can see where the light's hitting and on that step don't worry too much if it runs off into the um, into the grooves on his sigil because uh, we're doing an oil wash later and that's really going to bring everything out so don't worry if it looks a bit pale at the moment. Now we're going to use that same mix and add a tiny bit of Rakarth flesh and finally now we've built up those layers you can start seeing the transition. Now we're using Gunmetal by Game Colour but if you wanted to you could use a good old fashioned lead belcher or any other metallic you want to do these parts in. I wasn't really sure what colour to do all these parts, um, sort of making it up as I went along. 
which also took a lot more time. Spent a lot of time staring at the model, trying to pick out a decent paint combination for it. I will try and put this paint list in this video for you, because uh, someone recommended that a while ago, but it's a lot more work than you would expect, you know, uh, putting down those paint lists and getting them all checked and getting all the numbers for the Vallejo paints, etc. I'm doing the same thing on the backpack. This is still gunmetal, but you can see how watered down that is. It's going to take a few really thin coats. And there's a lot of metallic works to do on these guys, uh, but at this point I'm really picking out what colour I want each bit to be. Now we're going to use brass by model colour, which is a sort of, it is more of a gold than it is a brass, it's a bit of a yellowy gold, I wasn't 100% on this one, and as I was saying I'm picking out colours as I go. And while that's drying we're going to use army paint a strong tone, sorry about that I haven't finished this bit of footage showing you the other parts that were done in that same brass colour. I almost forgot about those. Now we're going to be using Army Paint a Strong Tone. And we're going to use a Winsor Newton Series 7 and we're not going to use this as a wash, we're just going to paint it into those lines. So you don't want to water it down too much because um, it may run and seep into your other paints. Now when we do an oil wash, I don't really like the result I got because I ended up getting some of the oil in the grooves and um, didn't like that look. So if you're going to do the oil wash, I recommend not doing his coat and then if, you, if you're not happy with the lines in the coat after that, just give him another oil wash and put him in. Now we're using silver by Game Color and painting the middle of all the metal parts. This is really watered down as well and takes a few coats. I'm trying to exaggerate the, um, the clean areas and the dirty areas a lot because there's so much metallics on here that uh, you really need to break those up. Now this is null oil and a lot of medium. So like I said, we don't want to just make this dark. And what I'm doing is trying to paint those into the recesses at the tops of the bottom metal bars and at the bottom. If you really wanted to, you could pick out all the nuts and bolts with a different colour as well. Um, that's not a problem, it'd just be much more time consuming. And uh, don't forget to do the gun parts and everything else that you've done. I'm trying to keep that one silver metal colour unified across anything that's the uh, going to be the same colour. I'm not actually 100% sure what that is on his chest but I painted it as some sort of pressure gauge. Now you can see that coat and everything else really starting to come together. We're going to go over the brass now using Agrax Earthshade. And you know because um, there's just black on the underneath it doesn't matter if you go over the other parts at all because you can repaint those black and we're going to be painting those green with a lot of different greens later and hopefully putting in those bubbles um, I don't know how well they show up on camera though well, that's just one page of course on to the next two now we're going to mix Drusha Violet with no oil and some medium and the same way we did everything else is we're going to paint that into the recesses and then I'm going to clean it off this time with the brush where it's uh, toned anything a little bit too much. So drying my brush later on and just wiping the oil, I mean the uh, null oil, off the tops of the boots and everything else. Now we're going back to a bright, no sorry, we're using Bright Brass by Model Air. And we're not painting the whole thing, we're going to paint in between the nuts and bolts. So, you'd have a nut and a bolt and then highlight the uh, middle section of any of the metallics. And probably highlight the bolts themselves, that will give a, a shaded effect around the bolts for later on.
Now I decided to start picking out some more of the details and we're going to use Dryad Bark by Games Workshop to pick out his little utility belt thing. He also has a couple more pouches on his right hand side so don't forget to do those as well guys, they're sort of tucked behind everything. I also recommend painting this model like I've done with the backpack off first, you're going to find it a lot easier. Now after that I've decided what colours roughly I'm going to do with the um, shoulder pad to match everything else and we're going to start with brass by model colour. This is um, really watered down, you need to water it down because model colour paints tend to be a little thicker than some of the others. Then we're going to start highlighting that with gold by Model Air. The same way we did the, um, the gun, we're just painting in between the nuts and bolts, leaving a bit of shaded area. So you want this water down, go over it, go over all the sections, come back, do the middle bit of those sections you've just painted again to really bring up that highlight in those centre spots. Also, don't forget to do the right shoulder pad. It's easy to miss because it's under all that extra flesh. Now we're going to use an Agrax Earth Shade and a lot of medium. And carefully go around that shoulder pad, trying not to get much on the, on the purple. But if it does bleed into the purple ever so slightly, you can clean it up with your brush and don't worry too much because uh, when we put the oil washing, it's going to make a hard line across there and you won't see that join. Now we're using Rune Lord Brass by Games Workshop doing the exact same thing as before. Highlighting just the centres of those highlight, like all the spots we previously highlighted before the filter, we're going to re-highlight the very centres of those. And it just makes things look a little bit more three dimensional. But um, I'm using the Windsor Newton Series 7 because there's really not much space to work here. Now we're using an Agrax Earth Shade and Reclam Flesh Shade Wash mixed together. So about 50-50 and some Lamy at medium. We're going to pull that mainly down to the bottom of the shoulder pad trim uh, and in all the uh, recesses. Anywhere that's going to be the most shaded. You can always water it down a bit more for the top bits as you shade those as well and that will add another fi another filter and it will blend even better. And we're back to the Rune Lord Brass. Like I said guys, there's a lot of metallics on these models. Um, a hell of a lot and that's what took so long. Back to the Rune Lord Brass to just touch up those um, highlights again and they should all be filtered at this point really well. You can see it really well on that bit of shoulder pad. Now we're done with those shoulder pads for a while and I was trying to figure out what to do with this walking cane and I looked for some inspirational art so I had a, had a go at mucking about with some quick marble texture or some, some form of pattern along those lines using Caliban Green by Games Workshop. You can water this down a lot but you don't really need to because seeing as it's a base coat colour anyway. Then in my wet palette I put in Caliban Green and Warpstone Glow. Mix those together 50-50 but then I also started dipping my brush into both colours so it blended on the model like it would do in the palette. Now they don't show up very well on camera but uh, I'm gradually putting a stonework sort of look with a twists going from the left bottom left to the right and around around the walking cane and then anything that's really wet on there I'm um, pulling it around with a dry brush and that way it'll blend even more. It was just a um, quick muck about and an idea I thought let's have a go at this I've not tried this before and see what results we get and then I, as the, I did more layers of that I started adding more of the warpstone glow into it bit by bit so you not got any dark colours there, they're all ever so slightly blended together but seem to have a pattern on them. 
as you can see here, I start putting much more warp stone glow into it, but because it's really watered down, when it dries, it will be blended really, really nicely. Now, I wanted to tone that down a little bit, so I used Baltan Green and Null Oil, and that was to make sure there was no hard brush lines on any of that pattern that I did. Really doesn't show up well on camera. Um, putting a bunch of Lamy at medium into that wash as well, because I didn't want to drown out the colours. What I could have done then is add some black and paint some black in and then add another wash over the top to give it more definition. Now we're using Gawthor Brown by Games Workshop and we're going to pull that into all the highlight areas for the um, utility, utility belt that he's wearing. Just taking your time with this because at this point you've done a lot of work. Be very careful when you're pulling your brush away from your model. I can say myself that I've experienced many times you'll be busy doing something, pull your brush away, leave a streak of paint somewhere you didn't want to. It's a very easy mistake to make while painting when you're into what you're doing. Now to bring his face out with really watered down KD and flesh tone. As you can see how watery that is. That's going to take a lot of layers but we really want to bring some of his face details out. And obviously the smaller the work surface is, the more watered down your paint's going to need to be because um, you can easily clog up those details with your paint. Now while that was drying after a few coats, I decided to start on the hair because we're going to have to blend the two of them together, otherwise there'll be a hard line of hair colour and skin. So I started his hair with a cold grey model colour. And this is essentially just a base coat for that really guys, it took a couple of coats because uh, you don't want to clog up the fine details where the hair breaks up, but you also want an even coat. Oh. And then we're using um, Cold Grey by Model Colour, and this is almost a dry brush over the um, hair. It's very awkward to get to after a while and uh, not fill in those uh, darker gaps. But if you do go over the top with it, don't worry because the, the um, oil wash is really going to pick up the lines in the hair. Now I'm going back to no, I'm using the Reclam Flesh Shade, sorry, which I went a bit a bit stark on here, but um, we're going to pick all those details back out again. You see it's filled in the eye sockets quite a bit, but when that happens you just dry your brush off, put your brush into the wash that's on the model and it will absorb most of the wash out of there and that's how you clean that out. So now we're going back to a Cadian flesh tone, really watered down, and we're going to just start using the Windsor Newton and pulling from the recesses on his face to the highlights. So. His chin's going to need doing the usual stuff, the eyebrows, that's the best place to start when you've got a lot of paint on your brush still. Even though it's a small work service, you may have more paint than you need. Start with an extreme highlight, then blend from the shadows to that highlight and then you won't end up with too much paint in one place. And it also builds up that layer a little bit faster. We also need to highlight the very top of his head, so don't forget to do that, otherwise you'll have a nicely detailed face and his head will be dark, but uh, I'm pretty sure with his head being that bald, it probably reflects quite a bit of light anyway. Now we're going to mix Kislev Flesh into the Cadian Flesh Tone. Just enough so it shows up um, when you do the highlights. See, we've covered most of the face now in the Cadian Flesh Tone, just leaving the Reclam Flesh Shade and the recesses. And then the Cadian Flesh Tone is a... Uh, and because of the flesh is just to re-highlight those bits even more. Now I went back to the backpack while that's all drying and everything else and we're using Balthazar Gold by Games Workshop. Again Games Workshop metallics are a bit thick so you're going to want to water this down and do it in a couple of layers. I thought the backpack was a bit distracting from the video so I decided to do the skull on his cane. That was still Balthazar Gold, they're all painted the same. And then Bright Brass by Game Colour. 
Same way we did the face, we're going to pick out any of those raised features and start going over it, leaving the Balthazar gold just in those recesses. But uh, with those glazing techniques you've been learning from the coat, apply them here and it will look so much better. You just have to be patient with these sort of things. Now I wanted to make it a bit of a, a warmer metallic colour, a bit more red, so I added a Reclon flesh shade to it. And that'll blend all that metallic work together nicely. It does look a bit stark at the moment, but of course with all these metallics and all the layers we're doing, we're going to pick that back up again. Now while that was drying, I decided to use a um, black grey by model colour, because I'd not done any work on his gloves. So we're glazing, just like the other fabric, we're glazing all the raised bits, leaving the um, dark black, well, the plain black in the underneath. Um, because there's an oil wash coming on as well, you don't have to worry too much about leaving too much of the black in the gloves, you can add that in with the oil wash. Now while that's drying, going back to the skull, using the bright brass by Game Colour, and we're going to start picking out the eyebrows and the sides of the head just over the indented bits trying to pick out the um, teeth the little balls on the head or the little studs top of the nose and the teeth now the teeth on this are tiny so it's probably best to do an overbrush across those now I wanted to experiment with the um, with the gun, uh, I've not done this before. So I used Elysian Grey by Game Color and put in a um, hard line. And don't worry about get, don't worry about getting this line 100% straight. When you finish with it, you can neaten it up with a little bit of black. And this is just a uh, guideline on the gun from where I'm going to start the green colors. I did the same thing on the um, backpack here, and all I did was just blend the black at the bottom to the Elysian green at the top with Elysian green. Then after Elysian green I started putting a, a line at the top with uh, our green camo. Now this doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line, in fact it pays to make it a bit watery and uh, keep building up those layers so that it looks like the liquid in there is um, moving around. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up for you guys, but then I'm using the same camo green there to put little, tiny little bubbles just under that line. You want to spread these out and make them random, but you also don't want to be going over the top with those. <laughs> but the ma majority of them will be at the top, then there's be less and less at the bottom. Now I wanted to bring all the uh, tube together, so I used Ethonian camo shade and some medium. And obviously you can re-hilo those back up if you've gone over the top with the wash there. Now we're just using Panzer Dark Grey by Model Air. An almost edge highlight in the hand now. But um, just a bit more than that. Cover a little bit more of the surface watered down. Blacks can be a bit of a pain to highlight. Um, like I said, the oil wash will pick out, pick out all the creases in this glove. You're really just aiming for the knuckles and everything else there. Now we're using Panzer Dark Grey mixed with Mechanicus Grey by Games Workshop and bringing out more of the knuckles and the fingers and the area around the lacing on the gloves. Don't forget to highlight where the um, lacing is because when you put in the lacing you'll thank yourself later because you'll be able to see the, um, the part of the glove where it stitches together and the fabric underneath it. Now I started the rest of the laces that he's got with a Rhinox hide, that's including his gloves, the ones on the front and the gloves and the reason for the Rhinox hide is it needed to stand out a bit so I started with that as a base coat, didn't want it to blend into his coat but also needed a, another warm colour because that will complement all the other warm colours we've put on there. 
And after the Rhinox Hide, we're going to add Rhinox Hide and a bit of Morning Fang Brown. Go over them again. And that's really going to that's going to start making them stand out a little bit more, so they don't just look like a, a dark brown. The dark brown is a good base to start from, so you can correct yourself before you put too many bright colours on. I decided to start edge highlighting some of the his uh, actual armor, and that's just purple by Game Color. Watered down a lot. It was the same way I did the Necron Triarch Stalker. Same colour combination there. Just water it down a lot and be careful with it and use the side of your brush to edge highlight these parts. Now I didn't know what to do with these other mechanical parts but they needed to stand out so I um, painted them in warp block bronze first. Then I added a um, brass scorpion. And uh, started trying to blend that in. I think that mixture is a little bit too, a little bit too thick. And uh, all the other surgical materials he's got here, um, I wanted them to look surgically sharp. So I started just adding the plain silver by, well, just silver, sorry, by game game color to those edges to uh, make them look really clean, sharp, and shiny. Now adding his backpack on and I decided to um, blend the other metallic bits that we just did brass with Agrax Earthshade, toned them down, made them look a bit more weathered because it look, seems like they would have definitely seen some action. Not 100% sure what all these little parts are but I guess it's just what makes him such an interesting character and so unique. Now we're doing the um, head on the back of the, well that's hanging from his pipes so that's a death world forest watered down sorry about the focus there but uh, it's a bit hard to get in once you put that backpack on that's what the camera seems to focus on but we're just painting death world forest in a couple of layers on that head then we're going to highlight that with a duck egg it's a pretty strong highlight for this but um, the reason it looks so strong really is that it's come out of the wet palette so the, the paint's really wet. It's already a bright colour but the fact that it's wet makes it lighter because it's acrylic paint. You can see how watery that is on my finger there. Just bringing up those highlights around the face same as we did with Fabius. Or Fabulous Bill as me and Andy like to call him. Then we're giving him a wash of Athonian camo shade. It's just a straight wash, it's not watered down because we want to bring that definition back. And once we're done with that, we're going to highlight the face again with grey green by model colour. I also did the hair in, um, I think it was Rhinox Hide because I wanted a dark hair colour for it. And after we've done all this, um, it's time to spray it with a uh, gloss varnish and put the oil wash in, dry the oil wash, spray in with a mat and eventually spray in with a satin. And there you have it, one fabulous bile or fabulous bill. All that's left to do is stick him on a base and he's now ready for our battle reports. I really hope you enjoyed this video. We apologise for the length of it. It took a long time to uh, paint him like this. Um, it was a lot of fun. If you want to see more of these tutorials guys hit that subscribe button hit like don't forget to share with our friend like uh, share with our friends your friends everyone's friends who cares just share share our videos guys I'll let people know we're out there doing this and uh, thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one